We are here to learn a little bit about the theory of, of change. And I prepared a PowerPoint presentation, which I hope I'll succeed to share my screen. We tried before and I had uh, a little bit of, a, of a trouble. Uh, what, we are, what we are looking at today, I thought it would be useful because most people talk about the log frame. So just look at the theory of change vis-a-vis -vis the log frame. What, what are these, what are the differences? If, if I had to say, just to summarize it before we start the PowerPoint, for me, the theory of change is a more complex uh, tool, which may not be useful in all cases for, for Coffee Annan Foundation because um, most of the, um, most of the mantis come with already prepared project. They've decided on everything. The theory of change is a design tool uh, more than anything else. So when you are at the very beginning and you design your project or your program, it's very useful. Um, but anyhow, let's look at the two because there may be a possibility of marrying the two. So what are these tools? Um, what are these tools? Um, they are both for planning, monitoring, and evaluation of projects. And they focus on the outcome, what you want to achieve. They facilitate identifying the project components and the steps you need to achieve results. And they enable measurement and they're based on assumptions regarding the strategies that will achieve the outcome. And clearly and visually through some kind of a, 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 a framework, communicate the project to donors, stakeholders and beneficiaries. So from that point of view, both the theory of change and the log frame are useful to us. So let's look at the two tools. The log frame was developed many years ago uh, for USAID. I remember many years ago, I used to work for USAID and it was uh, an obligation for us to learn how to, to use it. And without it, we couldn't get funding for projects. It's, it's very linear and very sequential. You go from inputs, outputs, uh, et cetera, to, to results. And, but it's very good as a framework for monitoring and evaluation the project that you have. And in the final analysis, of course, it tells you how the project will create the change that you want. The theory of change, on the other hand, was developed by evaluation experts. So it's not, we are not just looking at, oh, here's the input and here's the outcome that will result from this input. The intention is to demonstrate all pathways leading to desired change. So again, when we look at the theory of change, it starts from the problem. Um, we identify what the problem is, and then we look at what can resolve that problem. And, and the what can resolve that problem can come in different ways. That's what we call the pathways. So there are different pathways leading to a desired results, not just one pathway, which the log frame will, will actually um, describe to, uh, to us. And therefore it's a very comprehensive methodology and it tells us what is the connection between activities, outcomes, and it looks at a lot of other assumptions that may affect the results uh behavior culture etc just just to remind everybody i think i'm sure you all know all these what are inputs activities outputs outcomes impact and, and assumptions so i'm not going to dwell on on this um on this one but just to remind all of us what what we are talking about um this is an example of logical framework that I took from USID's work. If we want to achieve improved sexual health in community A, we start with activities. Um, we decided that 
uh, this will be our goal. This is how we resolve a problem. And then we look at activities, outputs, and, and outcomes. If we look at, um, at, a, at a theory of change, we may have the same common components, but the thinking is uh, a little bit different because in the theory of change, we are looking at what is the desired long-term change, which is the same as probably the, the goal, but then we go backward to see what are the different pathways. And here, just, just so that we can compare the logical framework to the theory of change, um, we have the same pathways as, as in the logical framework. Community members are aware of family planning and community members use effective means of contraception, et cetera. Uh, what is added here are the, the assumptions which, which may concern the, the local institutional support to family planning practices, the involvement of stakeholders. Again, that's a difference between the theory of change and the log frame in that in the theory of change, we have to involve other stakeholders and we have to look at other sectors, not just the sector where we want to, to create the change. Um, so let's compare again the, the two and see how they, they face each other. The logical framework is a logical framework. And it's mainly, its strength is that it can be used for a very good tool in monitoring and evaluation. On the other hand, the theory of change is best used as a tool for program design and evaluation. This is why I said that for the Kofi Annan Foundation, probably the theory of change will be, um, it will be useful to understand it especially for, for the future, but for the moment, because they come with already pre-agreed projects, um, then the theory of change may not make that much sense in, in using it because they are beyond the change of program design, except if they are not, if they're still designing, then the theory of change may be useful. The logical framework is, is descriptive. It tells us exactly what are the project goals, activities, outputs, inputs, risks, assumption, et cetera, et cetera. And the assumptions that we put into the log frame are usually very basic. Um, and we don't do a lot of uh, data collection in order to justify those assumptions. And the most important thing is that in the log frame, there is no explanation as to why one thing will lead to the other. That's the part that the theory of change will have. So if you look at the theory of change, it's explanatory, not just descriptive. And it takes, it looks at the desired change or very often at long-term impact and it examines each activity and can you control something? Can you not control something? What are the preconditions? What in will inhibit um, something? And it probes the assumptions, which the log frame will not do. As I said, collect the data in order to enable us to probe the assumptions. And it will demonstrate all possible pathways that will lead to the change. In the log frame, there's only one pathway. Uh, that we, we describe as to how to reach the result we want. In the theory of change, we are considering a number of pathways to achieve a certain result. If I look at Maimon T for, for last year, uh, Marius, he, his uh, change was improved nutritional status of children. Now, there can be a number of pathways to reach there, not necessarily the one that he had in his project. The one that he had in his project was using local, um, local uh, uh, 
products that are available in the country and teaching mothers and fathers how to use them. But they can be um, improved nutrition of children also by distrib distributing um, food uh, supplements, multivitamins, I don't know. I mean, I, there are many ways. So the theory of change, we look at different, different pathways that can lead for change. And we'll do the analysis as to why it will work or not, why certain activity will lead to change or not. Again, the structure of the log frame is very linear. It's very standardized. So the activities, as I said, will lead to outputs, will lead to outcomes, and then will lead to the goals. And that's how we have the famous log frame table. Um, again, in a log frame, you cannot have a cyclical process and feedback loop, um, which will tell you this, if this happens, this doesn't work, we go back to this, etc. The theory of change uh, is much more flexible and does not have a desired this, a standardized format. You can present it any way you like. Uh, it can be a flowchart, it can be anything, um, any graphics that, that you desire. And most importantly, it can have the feedback loop um, and one box can lead to many others. So in short, it's not just linear, it's flexible, it has feedback. Um, again, when we design a log frame, it's just the staff from our organization that were responsible for the project who will be involved in developing it. If we do a theory of change, we have to involve a much bigger group, uh, stakeholders, people outside our organization, other donors, uh, the beneficiaries themselves. Uh, for me, it's a big plus because this is how you establish ownership. If the beneficiaries themselves design the solution, if they're part of finding what's the best solution and why it will work, um, then they will feel owners of, of that solution. And again, other stakeholders, other organizations may be dealing with the same, let's say it's um, Marius Nutrition Project in Benin, then there are other organizations that are also dealing with nutrition and we have to consider them and what's the impact of what they're doing will contribute to child um, malnutrition or, or child nutrition, better nutrition. So um, that, that, that the theory of change will have to do. It will have to look at what others are doing. Of course, it is time consuming, but at the same time, I think it leads in the end. If we have the time and if we are able to do theory of change, it leads to a much better design project that takes account of uh, what others are doing as well. Again, um, coming back to Kofi Annan, most of the projects um, uh, we are looking at under the Kofi Annan Foundation are small, maximum, medium size. And so the log frame probably are more suitable to that. And um, they just make sure that we put everything, every component in that project into a, a table that is easily understood by people. The theory of change on the other hand is best when you design a more complex project and you have to have a rigorous plan for success. So it, it will, as I said, it's much more analytical. It will look at what will be the outcomes at, and what, what is the right consequence. And it will explain why a project worked or did not work and what exactly went wrong. The log frame does not have that capability of looking back and telling us why something did not work. A uh, log frame is created after the project has been developed. Um, if you think about all your mentees, uh, they, they design the project, they come to us with a design project, and then we help them to put together a log frame. So it's 
it's done after the fact. And then we look at uh, what inputs they're suggesting and what activities and whether that will lead to, to the result. So for me, the, the, if we ask what question is the log frame answering, it is if we plan to do activity A, then will that produce outcome B? On the other hand, the theory of change is best done before the project starts because it usually it's it's a backward mapping of the pathways to solution it begins at the top so a theory of change usually identifies the goal first and then works backward to map what's the pathway to to reach that goal what are the most appropriate interventions that will help us reach it and will create the change we want? Again, if we ask ourselves, what's the question that the theory of change uh, asks? It is, if we do activity A, then what is the reason outcome B will take place? In other words, theory of change looks at the why, not just will B happens because of A, but why did B happen? Um, <clears throat> a log frame, again, I'm just repeating here, a log frame states that activity A causes outcome B, but does not show why. The theory of change is a causal model. So each step, we have to articulate assumptions about why is activity A causing outcome B. Um, a log frame will focus much more on the project and how it's operating and not on external factors so much. As I said, it doesn't look at what other stakeholders are doing. It doesn't look at a number of things that are happening around us that influence the results. The theory of change on the other hand tries to understand the context of the project and the factors that will influence the result that we are producing. So again, just to summarize the disadvantages, I'm now looking at disadvantages of the log frame and the theory of change. The log frame is limited because it focuses on one pathway only. That is activity X leads to outcome Y and does not refer to possible other outcomes that can happen with other activities. <clears throat> the log frame does not explain why activity X results in outcome Y. The theory of change its disadvantages are that it requires more investment of time, including we need stakeholders dialogues. We need to talk about others who are operating in the field, see what they're doing and how that influences our project. It requires more accurate data and more recognitions that the project is complex and the result is uncertain. For example, again, I'm coming back to Marius and his nutrition project in Benin. He didn't think about, um, for example, the security situation in the north of Benin where the project was implemented. And finally, this advantage of the theory of change, it can confuse stakeholders if there are too many different assumptions. And my very last slide, if we are thinking which one to choose, it depends on the capacity that the organization has to do that kind of uh, thinking and design. It depends on how complex our project is. Are we able to commit time? And do we have the skills, the knowledge and the resources to, to do that? And the conclusion is very simply, both the theory of change and logical framework are tools that we use to describe how programs lead to results. 
So we can opt for both. We can use both if we want, but that depends, of course, on the size and scope of the project. Um, and I'll stop here. <laughs>